typically uh, commercially bought stretcher and it's mitered and it's got a cross piece and the cross piece is for extra support because when you're stretching the canvas it puts a lot of pressure on these sides without the support you tend to get a kind of bowing effect and also you can see it's quite thick as well so it's sturdy you can make your own stretcher pieces just use two by one or three by one with a bit of beading and it's easy to make them up in the workshop you can buy these pieces individually from specialist suppliers you can look for it online just on the stretchers and they come not as medical stretchers <laughs> but as the stretcher pieces like this so that's one half of the equation the second half of the equation is the canvas this is really good canvas that the college have got so you get different weights it's called cotton duck you can get 10 12 or 14 ounce cotton duck the heavier the better in a way because you can attack the canvas a little bit more you can be rough with it you can sand it you can cut into it and it's very durable um, but it's harder to stretch if you buy the cheaper canvas it's not so uh, forgiving but it is easier to stretch so you've got a big supply around the corner there if you need to make your own stretchers we've got canvas we've got wood we've got materials but these, these are my pliers so you need to get your own pliers or use your own hands canvas pliers are a little bit different from normal pliers in the center they've got this kind of wide mouth for gripping the canvas without tearing it and with heavy canvas like this it's easier to use pliers than your fingers it feels like it's either a 12 or a 14 ounce so you can, you can feel that you can feel it's quite heavy um, in terms of how do you calibrate the size in relation to your stretcher what you do is you put it down and you need a little bit either side okay now the best thing to do to get even lines you, you can see if you if you use a pair of scissors it's a bit wavy but if you make a cut and then just tear it, you get a straight line and similarly the other way so it's about is it six seven centimeters maybe a, a bit more staple gun, this is quite a live way to staple gun, make sure you've got enough staples in. Start by doing the middle and that way you're kind of stretching your canvas so it gets tighter and tighter towards the corners um, and you get a feel for it really but if you just put one in there you might as you go along, you sometimes need to take out the staples you first put in. So we might be taking some of these out as we go along, but just pull it very slightly, not too much initially, but you pull it tighter as you go along. my fingers not the pliers at the moment when we use the pliers you can get really tight so those first four staples that you put in it gives you a kind of kite shape and what you're trying to do at the moment it's tightest there and there you're moving that tightness all the way along the sides so what you're trying to do is you're going in opposites now as you go in opposites you've just got to make sure that where you've not got so much canvas, say there, you're not pulling it so that then you can't wrap it over. So you've just got to keep that in mind. But otherwise, again, just sort of start with 
not too tight initially, but getting tighter as you go along. And just keep doing opposites. And it's quite a small canvas, this, so it's um, all right to work. It's almost too tight now to stretch with my fingers. The staples are about three or four centimetres apart. I'm just at the point now, you can do it with your fingers, but you just don't get it so tight. So what I tend to do is I grip some of the canvas. Got, you can see it's got a, a step and you kind of position that step against your stretcher so you can get leverage and I'm using gravity so it's down like that and it's just that bit easier so just uh, with one hand you're stretching and with the other hand you're stapling and then you just keep going around Keeping of opposites, and part of the reason for doing opposites is so that you don't lose the, the lap. You get that nice and tight at this point as well. So I tend to have a few more staples than these compared with here, but if you just keep rotating your canvas so that you're going from the middle out all the time. So you can see a clear kind of pattern is emerging where you've got tightness all here and that's going to get a bit tighter by the way as well and then all, all this is, is loose. So this set of triangles that you see here they gradually disappear as you move up the camera. So that's what you have in your mind as you're stretching it. And it's quite satisfying as feeling that tension develop. If you go onto my Instagram panel, <laughs> channel, uh, I'm stretching a big canvas. Five foot by four is a good size to use. So yeah, just make sure you... These, these aren't that expensive, these pliers. And they're a good investment, I think, if you're doing a lot of canvases. Can you use any... Um Yes, that's a good point, that, Linda. You've got to consider what you're going to do next. A lot of artists um, put their canvas up on a wall. They don't stretch it initially. They just put it on a wall like a piece of paper. And they stain it. And um, acrylic paint is a good thing to stain the canvas with. Without any preparation, just stain it just allow the paint to bleed across the surface and then what they do is they put it on a canvas like this put it on a stretcher like this um, and then seal it uh, you should seal it at some point unless you're just going to be doing a kind of stained canvas throughout but the thing about working on canvas it's all about layering so you some, some people think, well, I've, I've finished now because I've, I've covered it all. But if you're using a canvas, the thing is, you may be putting three or four layers, answering different questions each time. So it's kind of an adventure. Once you stretch your canvas, you kind of uh, get a sense of satisfaction just out of having stretched your canvas yourself not bought it. It's much better than one you would buy, actually, uh, because it's been made according to your kind of specifications. 
you see I'm just using gravity really to pull it down and it's getting nice and tight as we're going along. What do you seal it with? Ah, good, good point. Well, traditionally you'd use what we call rabbit skin glue. Uh, and I don't think it's just rabbits, but it's kind of a product. Uh, it's kind of, it's, it looks like sand, grainy. Um, and if you go online, you can see the, there are YouTube videos on what you do, but you put the granules into a pan of water, and the ratio is 10 parts water, one part rabbit skin size, and you melt it, and you apply it while it's warm, and you give it two coats, and that completely seals it. Or, PVA. <laughs> Water down PVA. <laughs> and then once you've done that, once you've watered down your PVA, leave it to dry, and then paint white emulsion on. And then you've got a nice surface to work on. A lot of people like working on white, other people like working on on grey or brown. The old masters like to work on uh, brown. And um, more recently, you know, you tend to buy canvases now, don't you? And they're really, really white. Right, so we need a better look. It's got a nice feel that. Yeah. And, and also the tightness of it. It's quite tight, isn't it? But now you've got to sort of start thinking about the corners which is a kind of tricky part to do. And you've got to sort of get close enough to the corners that the edges are tight, but no, not so close that you can't turn the edges over. So that's what I'm conscious of now. And you can see from the back how, um, how close the staples are together, can't you? And uh, that's kind of perfect in terms of the amount of uh, slack that you have. I'm just going to put the staple there. When you first do a canvas, uh, it may not be successful because it's you judge the kind of tightness of it and you, you kind of tend to get tighter and tighter as you get to the edges and when that happens it often means that the first ones you put in are no longer up to the job so you think oh why does my canvas not kind of uh, ring as tight as it should do it just takes time to work out. You don't want to do it so tight that the canvas tears. But there we are, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Now the corners, it's a knack in itself. You want to do it in such a way that you're, um, you're not leaving any bulk actually on the sides, right? So you kind of fold it over. Yeah, so you've just got a seam. Do the same there and this is where it helps that you've not got too much canvas hanging over people are often too generous in the margin and um, it makes it easy now for me to fold these canvases these corners over hey out of staples So you can see it's kind of two, two folds, a bit like origami, isn't it? And I'm not really using the um, stapler to do the edges. Just 
just need to roll it so that you, you get those nice tight corners. And the reason for that is if you frame it, you don't want anything to stick out. And that's it. You get these stray bits. That's fine. It doesn't all unravel. And that feels pretty good. So if you feel it now, but also the corners. And when you um, when you prime it or when you size it, it goes tight and then it goes loose again. Sometimes it's a bit looser than this. Um, and sometimes it starts to sag if you've not really tightened it properly. If that happens, just get one of those plant sprays that you fill with water and spray the back and that tightens it up again. So there we are. Is that all right? Mm, thank you. You're welcome. Any questions? You were talking about uh, with the glue and that. So I, the bought canvases, have they already got them on it? Yeah, they have. I mean... The bought canvases, is that one there? Yeah, that's the one I'm 